Hi, everybody. Mark Lawrence once again for the Playbook Experts YouTube channel with a special edition show. We're going to get into the NFL football rule changes and namely the kickoff change, which has happened this past weekend. The owners have finally decided to make a change. They wanted to put the foot back in football and let the <laughs> let players run the football back if there's at all a possibility of doing that. Joining me on the show, as we always do, Andy Isco from TheLogicalApproach.com, Jim Feist from Las Vegas, and Tony Mejia, a playbook experts, and our good friend Greg DePalma, the producer of the show. And uh, I'm going to let you start it all off, Jim, and lay the table, set the table for us on, on what you think is going to happen, or was this a good move or a bad move by the NFL to change the NFL rules for kickoffs this year? Well, it's going to add a little bit more excitement to the game, but I'm going to steal it. This is really came from Andy. And he correctly, in my opinion, observed that this is going to increase scoring because of the um, the field position that these teams are going to be able to get. Um, and that's good. I mean, people like to see scoring. They don't like to see defensive slow down, can't do anything kind of football. I just wonder what year we're going to go completely to flag football. <laughs> we should have an over and under on that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that might not be as far out of the realm as you as you're joking here. I know it sounds like the, the National Football League or flag football, but uh, my goodness, with all the concussions and everything going on, stranger things have happened. Uh, uh, before I turn it over here uh, to Tony and Andy and Greg, I want to uh, pass along to you from our coffee club, my daily coffee club that I send out every morning. It's in everybody's email box. Anybody that subscribes to any of our playbook services or my service gets this coffee club as a free no charge bonus every day in your email box. I had this email come in to me this morning here and I had to read this. Uh, I know the guy who sent it and I know exactly where he's coming from, but uh, he said, uh, so let me see if I understand this correctly. I want to see an onside kick. I can only do it in the fourth quarter. That's what the rule says. You can only onside kick in the fourth quarter. And if only if I'm trailing and I have to tell the other team that I'm going to do just that for an onside kick. I'm just curious. They don't have to tell what side they're going to kick it to. If they're going to dribble it, kick it from the top, or try to high bounce it or pop it up in the air. What's next on offense? You got to tell me, let the other team know what's going to happen. Are you going to run it or you're going to pass it? The unexpected onside kick is still one of the most exciting plays in football. Just like Sean Payton and Andy Reed in their memorable plays before. Uh, as a fan of Sean Payton calling the onside kick in the Super Bowl, Andy Reid kicking the onside kick against Dallas to start the football game. We need that rule to be stay as it was and not change. So I'm kind of mixing here an onside kick into the kicking changes. But uh, that's the combination of the two, the kickoffs, Andy, or the onside kicks. Any thoughts you have on either of these two subjects? Well, I agree with, uh, with Jim, and we were talking about it earlier, that I think scoring is going to be – increased because of the fact that we should have better field position. I don't specifically recall the rules, but I know that if a, a kick goes out of the end zone, I believe the ball is put at the 30 yard line instead of the 25. And I think that if the ball hits the ground or something along those lines, the kicking team is not allowed to move downfield until the ball hits the ground or is touched by a player. And I believe that's it. And I think there's one other rule there that would move the ball back to the 20. I think that if the uh, uh, there's no longer going to be a fair catch, you have to move something. So there's some rule that indicates that uh, uh, that the ball would start at the uh, 25. So I do agree there's going to be more scoring because you're going to see more kickbacks, uh, kick returns, and you're going to see better field position as a result. So teams won't have to go as far on offense to score as they would have previously. And, of course, the uh, possibility of a kick return for a touchdown is increased since there's no longer any uh, fair catches allowed if the ball – I mean, Bill Belichick started this uh, a number of years ago under the rules that have just been changed, and he would always say, I think my uh, – Kick return, my kicking team can stop the opposition before they get to the 25-yard line. So my kicker is going to kick the ball inside the five and force a return. And I believe the numbers suggest that he was right more than he was wrong when the kicker actually was able to put it inside the five and they were able to return it and stop short of the uh, of the 25. I briefly want to mention one other rules change that I thought was long overdue, and I still don't think it's perfect, and that is coaches are now being allowed a third challenge if one of the first two challenges that they use is successful. 
what I think the rules should be. And again, it involves integrity, which, again, it's unlikely we would think, but the possibility is not zero. So it could happen, though I hope it doesn't, and I, it's probably unlikely. Coaches should never be denied a challenge if they are correct. So in other words, even if, if you're allowed one failed challenge, but if you use – if you get that third challenge and you're correct because you've lost one but you won the other one and you get that correct, you should continue to be allowed correct challenges until you get a second incorrect challenge because, again, in the unlikely scenario, uh, there could always be plays that are called that if they weren't subject to challenge could be somewhat questionable. That doesn't mean that the replay official, replay official is going to get it right, but at least they have the opportunity to uh, uh, to challenge. And, again, the, the, the change – Went back to that. What was it? The Saints? Uh, was it the Saints Rams or Saints Vikings game with the obvious pass interference that wasn't challengeable at that time? You don't want there to be any possibility of uh, the game not being decided by the players, and the only way you can do that is to at least until you're you fail a second time on a challenge, then your challenges are gone. But as long as you keep getting your challenges uh, upheld, the challenge being upheld, you should be entitled to have more challenges just in case. Tony, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, taking out the onside kicking, having to tell the other team you're going to onside kick, it sort of turns the National Football League into the no fun league. Uh, what's your <laughs> thought on that and this new kickoff rule that we're going to be seeing implemented next year? I mean, it, that doesn't bother me that much. I mean, it happens so sporadically anyway, and teams typically know that when an onside kick is coming, you see it lined up. I mean, I guess it takes the, the true surprise element out of it in terms of the, the two aforementioned uh, instances where it was successful. You know, the Super Bowl one is obviously extremely memorable. But, uh, I mean, I, I really don't think it's going to be a, that big a deal. I really don't think this kickoff thing is going to be a big deal. The Steelers ran out and signed Cordero Patterson. Uh, and I do remember this from the XFL because it, it was a funky formation. Uh, I think in the NFL, because these kickers have such strong legs, that we'll see a lot of touchbacks as it is. So we'll see the ball start at the 30-yard line. Total agreement with uh, Jim and Andy on scoring. I mean, it was interesting that this announcement, obviously the coaching meetings are going on in Orlando, so all of these announcements are being made at the same time, but it comes on the heels of the hip drop tackle being banned, which also will add to higher point spreads because there's no question. It's going to be harder to tackle people. Now we're getting kickoffs uh, indoctrinated back into the, the mix. And then we've got uh, you know, just the fact that all of these things are designed to make for higher scoring games. So just like we have NBA totals now routinely in the 240s, we'll probably see NFL totals between two very high scoring teams move into the 60s. It's just going to happen. Tony Mejia, Vegas experts, uh, resident member and ex excellent handicapper. Greg, I, I had a question i got to ask well, you. Well, excuse me, Mark. Yes. I just want to read something that you mentioned about the onside kicks. The way that the explanation re reads is this. Onside kicks are also receiving an overhaul. Teams must declare to the officials, not to the other team, to the officials that they're attempting an onside kick when trailing in the fourth quarter. The onside kick will then use the existing rules. So so it's the, like re re a player reporting in, then they have to report to the official. Right. That doesn't have anything to the other team. But, you know, when you see an, a player reporting to the official, uh, the uh, uh, the other team probably has an idea of what's going on. And that may be the very same thing unless like three players go to the official to report the onside kick and they don't know which one is reporting that we're going to be in the play or something like that. I follow you, Greg. I think I read and I might be wrong on this, that uh, on the National Football League new kickoff rule, every kick has to be returned. Obviously, if it's on the field in play in the field, they can kick it out of the end zone. You can't return that. Uh, is that a good rule, uh, and will who, who will that benefit? Will it benefit more of an impetus for the team returning the kick or for the team that's kicking the, kicking off the ball and defending it? Well, it could still be where the ball is kicked uh, through the end zone, and you can still down it in the end zone. As Andy mentioned before, you, you just get the ball at the 30-yard line, so you don't have to return the kick, but you will have to return the kick now if it's not kicked in the end zone. That between does, the twenty, between the twenty and the end zone. Yeah, that so that, that that's called that zone, that no zone rules that they're having. Where they had an option to fair catch before. Yeah. Yes, which I which I'm good good with, and I'm also good with this new rule because of the fact that, yeah, I mean, is it going to mean we're going to have ten kickoff return touchdowns? No, but will we have a couple more? I believe they will because again, you can't move until the guy 
uh, returns the ball till he till till he, the ball's in his hands. And by the way, he can't wait for the ball for more than three seconds either. So you can't just sit there and everybody's sitting there waiting five or six seconds as the ball's sitting there. And <laughs> they, there's a rule: we, the official will be able to count three seconds and then everybody can go. So I like the fact that they they don't have to move. So look. The fact is, it happens every time there's a new rule in the NFL, or in most sports, but especially in the NFL, because we're seeing more rules changes in the NFL than any other sport. And that is that the, 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 there will be a coach, there will be somebody, there will be a team that will exploit this rule in a positive way for their team. How it's going to be exploited, what, what, is, it, what is it that they're going to do that we're going to be amazed by, or we're going to say, oh, wow, well, they, they really uh, did something with that rule. They really, uh, hey, it, it, the rule's the rule. We just, we, we, you know, we're, we're just, we just, we're smart enough to find a way around the rule uh, to the letter of the law and still work it to our advantage. So that's the thing that I'm going to be interested in seeing is which team winds up uh, really creating an advantage for their team based on this rule. Will it be kind of like the who, who, who uh, in the NFL like, has the most speed? I mean, I was say kind of like the uh, the the push rule that is going to be staying in play. <laughs> yeah, that that they, they haven't changed that one. And probably uh, more teams will learn how to do it a little bit better than so the, they can keep up with Philadelphia. The Dolphins have the fastest players in the league: Mostert and uh, uh, the kid from uh, from Texas A and M, and and obviously Tyreek Hill. So from that standpoint, I, they have the personnel to yes. exploit it. Yeah, because let's keep in mind, because that's a great point, Tony, is is that last year and all the other years before that, we would always say, oh, yeah, he's a great kick returner, but well, you can't put him on the return units. He's too valuable as a receiver. Now, because he's less uh, less prone to injury in this report, in this situation, this rule, you're going to say, hey, screw it. I'm going to put my fastest and my best players, my receivers, my starters out on special teams and make them – uh, again, exploit the rule to their advantage. So, yeah, that's exactly what you're going to see happen. Big yeah, change in that way. Yes, right. Exactly. All right, Jim. I'm, I'm just wondering how you reduce injuries by eliminating the fair catch. I mean, because you, because you can't move until you. Uh, yeah, you don't have I, a run, you don't have a running think, start. You know, yeah, in tackling it, it, the players. Right. You you know what my my, my thoughts on this because I remember it with the XFL. Because it does look weird, but at the same time, it, it kind of it, it it does make sense. This is going to be like a lot of NFL rules where we'll grow accustomed to, and it will be one of the the better rule changes where it'll be like, all right, that 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 was a good one. So, uh, but and, and it sounds way more confusing than it ultimately yeah. will. Yeah, because what what it what was going on the last year or two was just awful. I mean, nothing happened. You hardly had any kick return touchdowns. Now they're putting that back into the game and that that's that's a good thing it was almost as bad as watching fourth and fifth string quarterbacks playing in the national football league last year i mean (laughs) what they could do to overcome that by the way they they haven't made they haven't officially announced if they're going to make the change on the onside kick i haven't heard anything yet you know they're, they're still trying to propose the fourth and 20 idea as opposed to going for look everybody knows that trying to go for an onside kick now with the new rules is just it's it's, it's terrible i mean it's just it's awful it, it, i think there were only like only two successful attempts over the entire season last year yeah. successful so i mean i think most most teams would actually be okay with that hey give me fourth and 20 i don't care i got a much better chance of completing fourth and 20 than i do the onside side kick, kick yeah, yeah. So, Jim, let me ask you this as we wrap up this uh, this special edition about the kickoffs, the new rules in the National Football League. If they're going to put a name on this new kickoff rule, what would you both they call it? Billy White Shoes Johnson rule? What, uh, what, what sort of a name do you think that they should slap on this? Uh, Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> the NFL trying to try – to- doctor the league and do this this and that and this and that to make it more interesting but you know we've we've seen some marginal football the last uh, little while now a lot of that came from the fact that the quarterbacks haven't developed but then some of them did i mean look at the quarterback from uh, uh from uh, green bay i mean he finished the season off 28 touchdowns and one interception at his last run until he got to the playoffs and then he knocked off dallas so some of them started to click and, and, you know, it takes a while for these guys to come out of college and learn how to play football at the next level. But uh, I think, it, I, it's interesting that they're trying different things and I, I hats off to them for doing that. 
because some of these some of these leagues that don't do anything they just sit on it mark i think to answer your question the nfl won't call it this but a lot of media critics will call the new uh, uh kickoff rules the uh not quite yet flag football rule. <laughs> Close, but not quite. Huh? <laughs> I, I like the Devin Hester rule. I way. thought of that one too. Tony, there we go. Because I remember that. I mean, what great, what more exciting way to start a Super Bowl than either the safety that occurred in that Denver Seattle game or the uh, uh, Devin Hester opening kickoff return uh, uh, that had started the Colts and uh, Bears game, in which I was hoping to, that I didn't have to hear the words or that I wanted to hear the words, no flag. Yeah, makes you makes you wonder if he'll get a few phone calls. Uh, you mentioned that, Andy. It just brings you back memories. I was doing a, a piece for the USA Today about the propositions in the Super Bowl, and I had interviewed Jay Cornegay to ask him his thoughts about the Super Bowl. And I asked him, what is your biggest nightmare when it comes to these props? And he said, uh, a safety, that a safety is going to occur. If a safety occurs, <laughs> I don't sleep at night. And then what happened in that Denver game? Was it the first play of the game? I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that it's safe to say that knocked Jay right out of the game at that point. It's safe because to say. people probably, or some people, may have played the safety at some, as just a regular scoring possibility. Right. But for it to be the first scoring play of the game, that probably had triple digit odds at least. Okay, guys, that was our little, quick little take on the NFL rule changes. We're going to be doing a little bit, a few more of these tidbits and things like that as the NFL forever makes changes. Mm -hmm. You can pick it all up here on our playbook experts youtube channel or playbooksports.com check them all out the videos with yours truly mark lawrence andy yesco jim feist tony mejia and our producer greg de palma until our next special edition video this is mark lawrence reminding you to always to remember to bet with your head not over it and good luck as always